do you enjoy the most about living here? What I enjoy most about living here, I think, is just the, uh, for me, it's the peacefulness of where I live. Uh, on the, I live on the lake from Stark Lake. And uh, just being able to see the sunrise out there and uh, not be freezing. <laughs> it's, you know, I like the weather down here. Um, I've just moved from Colorado back here. But, uh, and it's, people ask me, you know, uh, you sure you want to move back to Florida? It's going to be 90 degrees. Well, that's what I grew up with. So I know if I came from it, I can go back to it and, and, and be able to deal with it. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, it's a comfortable place to live. Uh, any place can be a bad place if you let it be. But if you, uh, if, if you live right and make some right decisions, so is a wonderful place to live. It truly is. Is there anything that you miss about Okoy in years past? The lake. I've spent hundreds of hours on Stark Lake. I used to be a lifeguard there. It's where I learned to swim. The lake at one time was crystal clear. And my dad would take us down swimming and he would throw dimes and nickels and quarters into the, off the dock. And we'd die for them, and we could see them to be able to get them, you know. Uh, so the lake's always been a major part of my life here living in Okoy, and it, and it should continue to be. What changed? The growth that came up around the lake and all of the, all the runoff from cars and the roads and the, and the fertilizers and everything. Uh, growth maybe wasn't managed as well as it could have been possibly to prevent some of that from happening because every time it rains all that water just washes right into the lake. And that's a lot of oil and grease and grime that, that just flushes down in there and it doesn't have any place to go. Uh, there weren't, you know, technology and, and knowledge of, of that kind of stuff wasn't you know, uh, a major problem, or wasn't a major problem for us back in that day. Uh, it, but it has, you know, the growth factor, I think, is, is, has been hard on the lake. And, uh, you know, allowing boats out there every day. Uh, and they're, you know, putting oil and stuff into the water every day, too. It's just, it's what happens. It surprises me that, Ocor that, that Stark Lake has gotten in the condition that it is in such a fast period of time, a short period of time, I say. I lived in Europe and the lakes over there are crystal clear. And their society is a thousand years older, you know, two thousand years older than what we have here. Yet their waterways and lakes are pristine. And we don't have that here. Uh, we expect, everyone expects to be able to go out and enjoy them and do what they want, but they don't consider the consequences of Sometimes there are actions out there, and uh, and I see them every day. Uh, people go out on the lake, very fast boats, uh, and and they've got very powerful sea dews now that can pull skiers. And and you know, back when I was a kid, we'd have boats on the lake, and there'd only be four, five, or six of them at the most on a weekend. So we never really had any problems with overcrowding on the lake. Now on a weekend, it gets crowded out there, especially with the wave runners and sea dews. And it gets dangerous because nobody knows how to drive them. They don't know what the rules are of the waterways. And there's no training that I know of where if you go buy a boat, you can just go buy a boat and put it in the water and go out there and drive around. Just because you have a boat doesn't mean you know how to operate one safely. And so, uh, you know, the congestion out there and all, it's, it can get dangerous out there now. I see them. They're crazy. <laughs> Does anyone swim anymore? They do swim uh, up there by the, down by the dock. They do swim there. Yeah, I see them. Not as much as they used to. I mean, it used to be a, a huge beach down on the lake, uh, right there on, on uh, Lakeshore Drive with a huge dock going out, and that was the centerpiece where everybody congregated 
on weekends, that's where you went. You, you went to Saturday afternoon, you go swim and, you know, either you go swimming at the lake or you'd go to Winter Garden to the, to the uh, theater in Winter Garden and watch the, the movies at the walk-in theater there. When was that? That was back in the 60s. Yeah, that was in the 60s and 70s too. It was, uh, I, the theater is now back open, I believe, over in Winter Garden now. They're doing a, 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 some troops are coming in and doing plays and stuff up on stage now or whatever, I think, or they're doing something over there of that nature, which is very cool. I'm glad to see it came back like that. What would you like to see happen in Okoe in the future? I'd like to see Okoe get his mojo back. <laughs> to be honest, it seems like in the last 10 or 15 years, we've just kind of gotten bypassed uh, by development, by growth in our infrastructure. Um, I, I don't know if we lost vision or if leadership in, in the city lost vision or what there was a breakdown in the five or the 10 year plan. I don't know, but it just seems like we kind of came to a standstill maybe after the time of the uh, West Oaks Shopping Center came in. It seemed like we were on a very positive roll and go, you know, and when that came about and uh, there was a lot of uh, growth and expectation and, uh, was happening. And, uh, and then I don't know what happened. I, I don't know, I wasn't here for that portion, um, but it just seems like we kind of got left behind. Silver Star is still a two-lane highway in Okoy. It's four-lane everywhere else. Uh, same thing with Highway 50. Highway 50 is six lanes on one side of us and on the other side of us. But again, Okoy, it comes into a bottleneck. And traffic gets unbelievable down there. You get out on Highway 50 at four, 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it's a nightmare, absolute nightmare. So you can say the same thing trying to go from Okoy to Winter Garden on Plant Street. Same thing, it just, you got a narrow one-way street and then all of a sudden it opens up into the Winter Garden, it opens up into four lanes and, and you can start moving again. We just lost our direction, I think, and I don't know why, but we need to get it back. <laughs> I would like to see that happen. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to add? Uh, no, other, you know, other than Oak is a great place to grow up. I mean, we grew up here. When we grew up here, we had we had little league baseball, and some of the best athletes in this county came out of Oak playing baseball. Uh, we had, you know, we had a lot of a lot of things for the for the children to do and. A lot of community involvement that doesn't seem to happen today. It's just going through the motions anymore, uh, and kind of paying lip service to to those things. And and that's sad because that's a direct impact. Those those days on the lily field and practicing and playing full pint football. Uh, those days are, are you know the ones you always want to remember. And, uh, I guess they still happen to a certain extent here, and like I say, I, I don't have children, so I'm not sure as to the involvement of the city and all in that kind of activity now. I know we still have the baseball parks down there, and that's that's good, and we've got some parks throughout the, the community, but it just seems like we could do more to get, uh, you know, a better, better restaurants, bigger hotels, uh, better roads in here that would really uh, really help things appreciate around here. <laughs>